Over the years, the NBA has implemented a lot of different rules and regulations that try to control the way the players dressed. From the older dress codes to the more modern ones, the commissioners have always tried to create an image of the league that they wanted to see. However, most of those dress codes apply to players off the court, during press interviews or post-game conferences. In this video, we're going to take a look at 8 forbidden items or accessories that are banned on the NBA court. How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and without further ado, let's begin. Number 8, the Air Jordan 1 and the Nike Airship. Throughout the beginning of NBA history, when players started to partner with shoe companies to sign their own deals, everything was going on smoothly. For the most part, there was no controversy. That is, until Michael Jordan entered the scene. In 1984, Jordan introduced his first signature shoe, the Nike Air Jordan 1. This is what they looked like, predominantly red and black. However, this saga is still shrouded in mystery. Over the years, sneakerheads have assumed that it was actually the Nike Airship that got banned. Regardless, the NBA League office did not like this color scheme, because apparently it broke a previous rule that stated, a player must wear shoes that not only matched their uniforms, but matched the shoes worn by their teammates. The issue was, most of his teammates wore lighter colored shoes, mostly white or gray. So, because the colors of Jordan shoes were unorthodox, former NBA Vice President Russ Granick said, These red and black Nike basketball shoes broke the dress code. As a result, Jordan would get fined $5,000 for every game he wore these shoes, until they were officially banned from the NBA. Over the years though, the rules regarding what color shoes you could wear became relaxed. Nowadays, there are still some regulations, like how it still must match your team's colors. But besides that, the NBA doesn't really care as much anymore. Number 7, the number 69 jersey. No player in the history of the NBA has ever picked 69 for their jersey number. Are they avoiding this on purpose, due to the sexual connotations? Well, not really. In 1999, Dennis Rodman joined the Los Angeles Lakers and requested to wear the number 69. But David Stern rejected his request. Instead, Rodman decided to wear number 73. Obviously, that's not as exciting. While the NBA has never explicitly stated that the number 69 was banned, it is implicitly assumed. Ever since then, no other NBA player has even tried to wear that jersey number. Maybe in the future, somebody will break this trend. Number 6, Performance Enhancing Shoes In 2010, a company called Athletic Propulsion Labs created a $300 sneaker, which they claimed, quote, allows players to instantly jump higher thanks to the spring-like device hidden near the front of the shoe. Almost immediately, the NBA caught wind of this and they decided to ban them because they gave an unfair competitive advantage. One of the founders of the company, Adam Goldston, talked about how this works. When you apply pressure to it, it compresses. And when you go to jump, it propels you upward and releases. It's a mechanical device. There's no other technology in shoes that works that way. Obviously, that's against the rules. However, the funny thing is, the NBA banning these shoes basically gave the company a ton of free marketing. Most players, most fans around the country have never even heard of these shoes before. So when the NBA released a statement that banned these shoes from Athletic Propulsion Labs, the company saw their sales skyrocket. After the ban, they sold more shoes in a single day than the entire previous month. In fact, that's a huge part of their marketing plan even now. On their website, they use the whole banned by the NBA label as a way to market their products. It's pretty hilarious, actually. Number 5, Tinted Goggles. Generally, we don't see many players wear goggles anymore. Back in the 80s and 90s, it was more popular. Kareem was one of those players who popularized it. In recent times, Amari Stoudemire was probably the last NBA star to frequently wear goggles. They do have a practical use though. For him, it was because one time he got poked in the eye, 
and then wanted to wear goggles to prevent that from happening again. However, in 2011, Dwayne Wade was suffering through migraines, and all the flashy lights in the NBA arenas were causing it. That's when he decided to wear these. A pair of tinted lens goggles. D-Wade submitted these to the league office to get approval. However, after analyzing his goggles, the NBA league officials determined that there was too much tinting and it would have given him a competitive advantage because opponents would not be able to see his eyes. I could see where they're coming from, but it did lead to some issues from the Heat organization. Wade was suffering through some serious migraines and banning these tinted goggles certainly did not help his situation. The funny thing is, over a year later, Rajan Rondo tried to do the same thing. After suffering a serious eye injury, these were the goggles he tried to wear. They were the straight up sunglasses. Of course, the NBA also stopped him from wearing those. Speaking of Rondo, he also caused one of the most bizarre bands of all time. That leads us to number 4, the upside down headband. Throughout the early years of Rondo's career, he was well known for wearing a headband. But he wore his headband upside down, with the NBA logo upside down. When asked about why, he claimed that it was just a ritual. He's worn his headbands upside down throughout his entire life, and it's become a part of who he is. However, in the beginning of the 2010-11 season, the NBA banned this treacherous act of wearing your headband upside down. Nobody really knew why, but there were some conspiracy theorists who believed they were targeting Rondo. Maybe there was some beef between Rondo and David Stern, who knows. While other players did wear their headbands upside down, Rondo was by far the most prominent player who did it. Instead, Rondo ditched the headband altogether for a few years. In his last couple seasons with Boston, he was seen with a naked head, no longer donning his signature headband. However, over time, he decided to put it back on, but this time it was up straight. Number 3, The Black Mask In 2014, LeBron James suffered a broken nose. Usually, players who break their noses wear some sort of protection, usually a mask that looks something like this. However, since we're talking about LeBron, he's always gotta turn it up a few notches. In a game between the Miami Heat and New York Knicks, this is what he wore. A black mask made out of carbon fiber. This created some amazing photos and it suited him quite well. Back in Miami, he was pretty much seen as the villain across the NBA fanbase, and everyone liked the way he looked. It generated a lot of buzz and became a part of popular culture. However, the league was not having it. They requested him to change it to a normal, clear mask. According to Brian Windhorst of ESPN, Quote, James appealed the decision and is still trying to get clearance to wear the black mask because he likes the lightness and fit of it. He also said he liked the style and how it matched the Heat's black throwback uniforms. His appeal would fail. Additionally, other players like Kyrie Irving and Kobe Bryant both wore black masks before, but they were also asked to change to a clear mask. So it didn't just happen to LeBron, although his mask was certainly the most noteworthy. Number 2, Logos Wearing the logo of a different company that's not sponsored by the NBA was always a pretty controversial point, but that rule was never set in stone. That would all change. In the summer of 2015, the NBA would sign an official agreement with Nike to produce all of their apparel. This would come into effect starting in the 2017-18 season, and nobody thought much of it. I mean, the only big difference was that we'd see a Nike logo on every jersey now, and some of the colors might have been off. But the other big deal was that NBA players were no longer allowed to wear or display logos of any other companies. The first notable case happened in December of 2017, where Kelly Oubre wore a Supreme sleeve. During halftime of a game, he was asked to take it off. Another incident happened a year later, in October of 2018, J.R. Smith was told by NBA officials that he must cover up all of his tattoos of corporate brands. He has a large tattoo of the Supreme logo, and the NBA told him that he would be fined if he did not cover it up. 
Lonzo Ball would also be forced to cover up his big baller brand tattoo, so his tattoo artist turned it into some weird looking dice. This complete banning of corporate logos outside of Nike drew in a lot of controversy, because players believed it was forcing them to limit their creativity, and that it was promoting censorship. And finally, number 1, Karate Headbands. As of this video, this is the latest ban the NBA has implemented. Throughout the 2018-19 season, we saw the rise in popularity of the karate-style headband. It's very common to see them in tennis as well, as Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal wear similar headbands. In the NBA, now it became popular among star players like Jimmy Butler, Drew Holiday, Russell Westbrook, plus a lot more. Unfortunately, the NBA was like, we can't have these Naruto looking asses running around like ninjas. So they were banned. The official statement said that it was due to safety concerns. I guess they were scared that the back of the headbands were hanging out and it could be pulled and cause a whiplash. Since basketball is a contact sport, it is a bit more dangerous to be running around wearing those compared to tennis. Anyway, that's all folks, those were 8 items or accessories that are banned from the NBA. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, do you think some of these were unjustified or unreasonable? I certainly think some of them are. Thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time, peace.